Hi, it's Justin from Spalted Stack Studio, and in this video, we're going to be building a coffee table. This video is going to be a lot longer than my normal videos. It's a pretty complex build, and there's a lot of steps, and I really want to go through each step and explain why I did it the way I did it. I started by referencing the factory edges to my fence and cleaning up the opposite side. Once I did that, I flipped it over and cut my pieces down to size. And I'm doing this because I want both edges to be very clean. The factory edge tends to get beat up during transport and you'll have some tear out and stuff. It just doesn't look very good. Since doing this cross cut on the table saw would have been a little sketchy, I'm going to use my track saw. Now I have these clamped together because I want these to be the exact same size. Even if they're a little off, it's going to cause some serious issues down the line. And again, I use the first cut to clean up an edge, and then I'll switch it over and cut it down to actual size on the second pass. Since I'm using plywood in this build, I'm going to have to put some edge banding around it. And I've used the iron-on edge banding before, and I'm just not a fan. It's too thin, and a little damage will pretty much ruin it. So I'm going to use some actual cherry wood, and I'm going to make it about an inch thick. This was my first time using a tongue and grease bit. And I have a terrible habit of getting a new tool and just using it on a project without actually practicing first. And because of this, I made a couple critical mistakes. I should have started with the groove. And I also didn't label the side of the workpiece that was against the tabletop. Both of these mistakes made assembly an absolute headache. Now moving to the step that I should have did first, I'll go ahead and cut the groove into the plywood. Another issue that I'm running into is my router table. I have it on casters and they are locked, but it still wants to move around a lot. I think it's because I have an epoxy floor, so it's kind of slippery. But either way, I need to come up with a different system because I'm going to end up getting hurt or ruining the workpiece. Next, I took my measurements set up my stop block and cut the miters onto the edge banding. Now normally I use my marking knife for things like this. That way I'm 100% sure it's going to be a tight fit. However, this time I decided to do measurements and unfortunately I was about a 30 second off on that. So there was a slight gap, but again it was only a 30 second of an inch so it wasn't too big of a deal to fix. For the most part, the tongue and groove bit made this glue up incredibly easy. However, there was a little bit of an issue trying to get everything to stay flush, and I ended up having to clamp it. I think that issue was caused because I took off so much material trying to get this cherry flat that it created some new internal stresses, and I didn't give it enough time to acclimate before I cut it into the strips that I'm using now. So in the future, if I have to remove that much material, I'm definitely going to let it sit for a day or two and then rejoin it and plane it. Now that the shelves are done, we can start having a little more fun with the design. Here I'm going to cross cut some walnut. I'm cutting it down to about seven and a quarter inches. Next, we'll be ripping these pieces down to an inch and a half. I need eight total pieces for the project, and I need an extra piece to serve as a spacer later on. We're going to take that extra piece we cut, and we're going to remove a saw blade's width off the thickness of this piece. And here in a minute, we'll use that as a spacer, and I'll explain why we're doing this. This is going to be the template we'll use to cut out the grooves for the pieces we just cut. Now if you notice when I'm cutting the first cut, I'm referencing the left side of the blade. On the second cut, I'll be referencing the right side of the blade. And that's why we remove the blade's thickness off of that piece. If we would have kept it the same thickness as the previous ones, we would have ended up with a cutout that was too big for the piece.
for the spaces in between each group, I'll use one of the pieces that we cut that'll actually go in there. And that's just to make sure that everything stays nice and even across the board. Once I make one cut out, I'll flip the template over and do the same. That way everything's a mirror image of each other and everything is perfectly spaced. Once I get the borders cut on everything, I'll do a bunch of passes and clean everything out so we have a nice template for our shelves. Now that the template is done, I'll use my depth gauge and transfer those measurements over to our walnut pieces. Doing this is going to ensure that we get a very tight fit and that everything's nice and flush during our glue up. Now here I made a critical mistake. One of the things about trying to get a really good shot with the camera is I don't always have the best view myself. I didn't realize how much tarot I was really getting. And honestly, I should have expected it and prepared for it ahead of time. It just completely slipped my mind. So to solve that issue, I taped a piece of scrap wood to the workpiece. And by routing through that, it helped solve the tear out problem. However, occasionally the router bit would grab the scrap piece just right and pull it off the tape, or I'd get a little bit of tear out. But it wasn't nothing too critical and it was easily fixed. And obviously since the router bit is round, we're gonna have a radius on our corners. So I'm gonna use my chisel and square that up to ensure that we get a nice tight fit with our walnut pieces. Next up, I'll be cleaning some walnut up for the legs. And I know it kind of feels like I'm jumping around a little bit. But that's just because I'm saving all the pieces that will need my dado blade to do all at once so I don't have to constantly switch between my blades. Although it's not that big of a deal to switch, it does take time and this project is already a very time consuming project. I'm going to start by squaring it up on the bandsaw. Then I'll move it to the joiner. Now normally you could probably do this on the table saw, however this stuff was in rough shape and there was a lot of rocking. So doing so on the table saw would have heavily risked a kickback. If you have a band saw, it's a much much safer option. If you don't, I would suggest making a jig on your table saw. Once we get it cut down to a size that will fit on the joiner, we'll go ahead and give it a bunch of passes on that. Once we get that side flat, we can get an edge flat and take it to the planer and get that side parallel. Now that I got one side jointed, I can take it to the planer and we'll get everything to a rough size. Now this is way more material than I need, so I'm not going to actually get it down to its final thickness here. I'll take it to the table saw, cut off what I need, and get that down to what it needs to be. And now with this material being so thick, I would have normally did two passes with my blade. However, I just had this blade sharpened, so it just melts through the walnut. After cleaning up the sides, I'll rip everything down to the appropriate dimension, then take it over to the planer and plane everything down to about an inch and a half. After planing, I can cross cut everything down to their actual sizes. Now the front two legs are going to be about half the size as the rear legs. The front legs stop at the drawers and the back legs go all the way to the tabletop. Next I can finally switch to the dado blade. Using the piece that we marked earlier, I'll make a pass just to ensure that everything's aligned properly. After confirming my measurements, I'll go ahead and cut all the spacers that we cut previously in the video. And since the top part of the front legs had the exact same cut, I'll go ahead and cut those while I still have the stop block set up. And again, I know this feels rushed. There was just so much footage and so many steps, it's really hard to pick what's important to make a video that's short enough that people are going to watch and not two hours long. Next, I can make the dado for the lower shelf. Now, after doing this initial pass, I realize I'm an idiot. Since the back legs are longer than the front legs, I shouldn't be referencing the top of the legs. I should be referencing the bottom. That way, everything's the exact same measurement, 
and the table doesn't rock when it's completed. After realizing my mistake, I quickly set up everything again, referencing the bottom, and went ahead and cut the dado for all four legs. Here I made another template for the legs, and I probably should have did this while I was doing the other pieces. However, I was really frustrated with that tear out. So I needed to take a break from this part and move on to something else before I started making more mistakes out of frustration. After cutting the top shelf dados into the rear legs, I raised my blade 3 8 and I'm going to remove the rest of the material all the way to the top of the leg. And this is kind of a little confusing right now, but it will make sense later on in the video. Basically, this is going to be a half lap joint for the cabinet on the top that will surround the drawers. Now that the legs and spacers are done, I can do a little bit of a pre-assembly. I'm using some double-sided tape to hold everything in place, and I'm also going to use some painter's tape to tape off spots that are going to be glued later on in the build. I'm going to have to do a couple different spray sessions. The design of this table prevents me from being able to spray a decent finish after everything is assembled. And by temporarily placing these pieces in, I'll prevent the glue from getting in the locations that I'll be gluing in the next couple steps. While that lacquer is drying, I'm going to come up with something to fix the tear out issues. So I'm using some scrap cherry, taping two pieces together, and attaching my template. Originally, I was just going to use this template to reference it on my table saw. However, it wasn't really working the way I wanted it to. So I just used a marking knife to mark the spots that I was going to remove my material, and then I'll remove the template and take it to the table saw. And this method worked a lot better than the previous one. I was able to easily align the marks made with my marking knife and get accurate cuts. And while the position of the cuts matter, the height of the blade does not. And that'll make more sense here in a minute when I actually glue it to the workpiece. The only bad thing about this method is using a normal blade to remove this much material. It's just a time consuming process and it would have been much faster if I would have been able to use a dado blade. Now we can glue those pieces in. And here's why the depth really didn't matter. Most of this is going to be cut off anyways. We only needed about half an inch, if that. And normally I'd be against using CA glue. However, since we're going to be gluing in the spacers anyways, that'll provide plenty of support. And with a quick pass of the track saw and a little bit of sanding, we can fix our problem with the tear out. Now you do have a little bit of a line where we glue together, but that'll be hidden by the spacers that we glue in. Since all our pieces fit nice and tight, glue up is a breeze. Everything just snaps together. The only thing we have to be careful of is squeeze out. Since we already pre-finished the lower shelf, we can't get any glue on it. If we do, we're going to end up having to sand it and we won't be able to reapply the finish, at least not in a very efficient manner. Once the legs are assembled to the lower shelf, we can apply glue and glue in the top shelf. And again, we need to be real careful on squeeze out because we cannot get glue on this lower shelf. We're going to use the exact same method to glue in the spacers. However, we need to even be more cautious in this step. If glue gets squeezed out in between these spacers, it's going to be very hard to clean out. There's only about a three quarter inch gap in between each one. So getting in there, cleaning up squeezed out glue and sanding it, then refinishing it, it's just going to be a giant hassle. Now we're going to move on to the cabinet portion of the build. I'm going to start by cutting everything down to a rough size. I have the left and right sides, the two dividers in the center, the left and right rear panels, and the center rear panel. After I fine tuned all my measurements for the rear panels, I set up my table saw to cut a half lap joint. This half lap joint will match the one that we cut into the rear legs. The left and right sides have one, and the center is going to have one on each side. I made sure to label each piece, that way I don't get jumbled up in cutting these half lap joints or during assembly. Since I cut this all from one piece, the grain looks like it's continuous through the cabinet. 
So it's very important that I don't get mixed up, otherwise it's gonna ruin that aesthetic. Once we get all those pieces cut, we can set our table saw up and get ready to cut our rabbits. And we're gonna be doing these rabbits so that way we can saw a piece of wood on the left and right sides to cover up the drawers. That way when you open up your tabletop, you don't get an ugly view looking into your drawers. Now the center, we're gonna do a little bit differently because we have to make room for the lift up mechanism. And this is one of those time consuming methods that I like to do that are tedious because I don't want to switch out to a dado blade. But I just keep making a pass on each piece. Then I move my fence over a little less than an eighth of an inch and make another pass until my rabbit is going to be the size of the plywood. The tabletop lift mechanism requires a three and a half inch space from where it secures to the tabletop and where it secures to the base. So I'll be running a dado three and a half inches from the top and saw on a piece of plywood and then that leaves me enough room to make another drawer. In these last two steps, I made the rabbit and the dado three quarters of an inch. Now that's not really necessary. I could have easily got away with half inch. However, I don't have any half inch cherry plywood and I really didn't want to spend the money on getting in a four by eight sheet of it considering I very rarely use it. So I just used what I had remaining of the three quarter inch cherry. Before I cut the miters into the corner pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and install my dominoes. And I'm just doing this for alignment purposes. The domino seems to work better when you have a nice square edge. When going into the edge grain of the walnut, I have the domino set at a 25 millimeter depth. Then I swap it over to a 15 millimeter depth for the plywood. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm using a 40 millimeter domino and the plywood is just under 20 millimeters. So if I was to split the difference, going 20 millimeters into the plywood would just drill a hole straight through it. Once I'm done with the side panels, I'll use the same exact process to do the outer back panels. Now that we got all the dominoes installed, we can go ahead and cut our miters. Now we have to remember that this is already the exact length it needs to be. So we're going to slowly remove material until we get a perfect edge. We don't want to remove any extra material than we need to. For the most part, the dominoes made the glue up a breeze. However, I either applied a little too much glue into the holes, or I just didn't go deep enough with the domino. Either way, I had to use clamps to pull everything together, but normally just a firm hit knocks everything into place. And unfortunately, my parallel clamps and my pipe clamps are a little too big for this, so I had to use my F clamps. And that was kind of a pain because I kept wanting to slip off the thin edge. The center board is going to be a little different. We don't have an outer edge to reference against the domino. So we need to be sure that our lines are very accurate. And when we do the actual dominoes, we need to be sure that we're right on those lines. If not, this isn't going to fit down, or it's going to be misaligned. Since this piece also has the two half lamp joints on it, we won't be able to tape the side down to the base like we normally would installing dominoes. So I have to remove it, clamp it to a table, and then I can use the domino. And again, I kind of had the same problem during this glue up. For the most part, the dominoes made it a breeze but I still had to use clamps when normally I don't. So either there was something going on with the domino and it wasn't drilling as deep as it normally does, or I was just applying more glue than I normally do. In the end, it looked fine, but I was kind of worried that I was going to break something with how much pressure I had to apply with the clamps. Moving on to the center dividers, we're in a similar situation and we won't have a side to reference with the domino. So we just need to be really critical on where our lines are and making sure that they're perfectly lined up. After that, it's a breeze. Now I did tape my workpiece here, but it wasn't really necessary. Since the lines won't line up perfectly because there is an offset, I could have just clamped it somewhere else and had the same results. But I was running out of room on my tables and I needed somewhere to work, so I just taped it here. And as always, we're being really careful to make sure that we're switching the depth of the domino. If we don't, we're going to drill straight through this plywood and we're going to ruin the project. And finally, this piece snapped in like it actually should have. 
I still did apply clamps because I wanted to make sure nothing got out of square and everything remained nice and flush. Now that I got that all glued together, I can take some measurements, cut the two outer tops for the cabinet, and the center divider for the table lift mechanism. Now originally I was using tape to make sure I didn't have any tear out, but I realized I had a really good blade in here and a high tooth count, and it looked just fine, so I didn't need to use the tape after all. Now I don't want to glue those tops in quite yet. I need to make the drawers first. And the reason for that is there's not very much room. And once I glue in those top pieces, accessing that area and installing the drawer slides is going to be a pain. So we're going to make the drawers, make sure everything installs fine, and once it does, then we'll glue in the tops. Next, I'm going to insert my drawer slides into my cabinet and take a measurement. That measurement is going to be my drawer width. However, I'm going to add about an eighth inch to that measurement. Then once I get that piece cut to the rough size, I'll fine tune it to make sure I get a perfect fit. It's kind of a critical step because even if you're a sixteenth off, that drawer isn't going to operate as smooth as it should be. So always start with more and take a little off at a time until you get your perfect fit. And I'm going to repeat that method to all three drawers. I'll get everything cut down to rough size, then fine tune the front and backs, and then I'll move on to the dovetails. Admittedly, I'm not very familiar with this dovetail jig. I've only used it three or four times now, and there's been a long time in between each use, so nothing's really stuck in my head yet. And unfortunately, because of that, I made a couple mistakes. Thankfully, it wasn't anything too big. I was able to easily fix everything. But if you have a real trained eye, you could tell that I struggled with it a little bit. Part of the issue is I didn't set up a way to stop the dado. Given that I'm going to be putting drawer fronts on this, it doesn't really matter that the dado goes through the front of the dovetails, but it does matter if it goes through the back. And since I went all the way through like that, if you pull the drawer out, you're going to see the dado from the back. When I was cutting out the drawer bottoms, I didn't have the same blade as before in my table saw. So this time I did apply tape just to be sure that I didn't have any tear. The dovetails make assembling the drawers very easy. Everything just snaps into place. You generally don't have to warp things to get it square. Everything just fits together as it should. But again, for situations like this, I try to be as careful as I can with my glue. I really don't want to clean up a bunch of glue on the inside of the drawers and then sand in corners. So it's better just to be careful and not get a bunch of squeeze out and quickly wipe up any squeeze out that you do get. Now I can install the drawer slides. I'll be using a scrap piece of half inch plywood as a spacer between the drawer slide and the base of the cabinet. This is going to ensure that everything's nice and parallel to each other. I'll start with the front screw and work my way to the back, applying light pressure to the rail, making sure that it's flat but not compressing that piece of plywood. Next, I'll insert the drawer and use a piece of 8th inch plywood as a spacer. I'll clamp on a false face, that way I can make sure the drawer slides are nice and flush. As I apply screws, I'll slowly pull the drawer out, again applying just enough pressure to keep it flat but not enough to compress the plywood. Off camera, I went ahead and attached the drawer faces. And again, I was careful to label these as I cut them to ensure that they go in the right location and you get that continuous grain look. And here I'm just finding the center of each drawer so I can install the poles. And since I'm essentially drilling through two three quarter inch pieces of wood because I overbuild everything, I did have to purchase some longer screws. In the rear, I'm countersinking these so that way it's a nice clean feel on the inside. And I pretty much repeated this step for the other two drawer pulls. Though the center one was a little different, I did not get any footage of that one. After doing a test fit with the drawers, I went ahead and removed everything and took it downstairs for another coat of lacquer. Since I'll be gluing the top in soon, I need to make sure I get the inside of that cabinet. And now I can glue together the six quarter cherry for the tabletop. 
Now the dominoes weren't absolutely necessary, however I had just enough of this cherry to complete this build. So it was absolutely critical that I had some perfect alignment during my glue up. So it was worth spending the extra half hour to install the dominoes. Prior to installing dominoes, I did make sure to alternate my wood grain. And you do that to help prevent any kind of cupping that will happen through seasonal wood movement. Although most houses don't experience drastic humidity changes anymore, it's still a really good habit to consider. Things can happen. People might leave a door open or they might be cooking and forget to turn on their heating vent. You should always compensate for seasonal wood movement just in case. It's not worth the risk. And unfortunately, I didn't get much footage of any clamps being applied because my camera died. But be sure I used every single clamp I had. Since I used plywood for the top of the cabinet and that drawer divider in the center, I need to cover up that ugly plywood side. So I'm going to rip down some walnut and play with the tongue and groove bit a little bit more. I'll also go ahead and cut everything down to size. Now I will make it a little oversized, about 3 16ths or so. That way after I get it all glued up I can come in with the block plane and make sure it's perfectly flush with that piece of plywood. Back to the router table with the tongue and groove bit. This time I'm starting with the tongue to make sure that I have good alignment. And also always be sure to use your push blocks. I don't care how many videos you see on Facebook where you have someone missing four fingers not using push blocks. It's always safer to do so, there's no reason not to use them, and it's really not that hard to use them. Now I can use that tongue we just cut and make sure that the groove is aligned properly, run a couple test cuts, and then go ahead and finish running the rest of the plywood through. This time the method was much smoother, glue up was super easy, I didn't have to worry about aligning anything, so always pay attention to the small steps because they really do matter. Initially, I was really worried about installing the lift-up mechanism because I've never done anything like that before. But it turns out it was super easy. I started by making sure to align the tabletop to the cabinet, installing the mechanism, then using some scrap wood and some double-sided tape to make sure I held it in place. I then slowly raised it up and had my partner hold it in place while I screwed it down. For whatever reason, the company that designed this lift-up mechanism didn't install any oval holes to account for wood movement. My guess is this is designed to screw into plywood or particle board. Either way, I just used my Dremel to make sure that I had enough room to allow the screws to move as the wood expanded and contracted. Now I can work on the final assembly. I took these drawers downstairs, sprayed them, and now reinstalling making sure that the lacquer didn't tweak any alignment. After I make sure everything's properly aligned, I can give the final sanding and take it downstairs and put the last couple coats of lacquer on it. Thankfully everything went together great. I didn't have to do a bunch of sanding to get it nice and flush. I went in with some 80 grit, cleaned it up a little bit, and then I worked my way up to 220. And there you have it, a custom made coffee table with soft closed drawers and a lift up table to replace the TV trays. Over 10 and a half hours of footage compressed into under 30 minutes, so I'm sorry if it felt rushed. Anyways, thanks for watching, like and subscribe.